Hey folks, what's up? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician. And in this video, I want to share three hidden techniques that you can use with Reason if you're using Reason as a plugin in another DAW. This is going to expand the world of possibilities that you already have with Reason and with your pre-existing effects in your other DAW and kind of let you unlock the next level of using Reason as a plugin. If you want any help getting your way around Reason, learning your way around it, I've got a free Reason cheat sheet. You can click on the link down below, get that, and it'll help you learn all the devices in Reason. But in this episode, what I want to teach you how to do is to use CV voltage, including like very complex patterns to do cool things with your tri tracks, like auto panning, advanced auto padding, crazy tremolos, creating your own like dreamscape sounds. And I want to show you how to quickly create really layered sounds using Reason. So let's just take this drum part I have here as an example. So simple enough drum part. We'll insert the Reason Rack plugin effect. For some of these, the stereo version you're going to want to use, especially for like these panner things, you'll just hear it a lot better. So to begin with, what I want to do is create a mixer using the utilities section in Reason. I'm going to use the Mixer 14.2. There's two different mixers, but for this, for the, a couple of these examples, the Mixer 14.2 is just going to be easier. So you basically have like your traditional like Mackie style mixer, 14 channels, it's stereo. And now in order to make sure that the audio is routed, routed properly, I'm going to hit tab to flip over the Reason browser and then open up the interface. So because this, there is an audio source on this track, what I'm going to do is take the main, which is basically the output of this audio track and plug it into the mixer. So now we should hear the sound from, of these drums going into the mixer on channel one and we should hear them coming out of the mixer on channel two, left and right, the master outs. So let's check. So there you have it. Reason explained. No, um, so I'm just joking. This is just the basics of using the mixer. We've got the routing all set up. Now let's actually start doing some fun stuff with it. So what I wanna do is take the Pulsar utility. This is an LFO generator, but there's a lot of other things you could also use for this in Reason, and I'll show you some of those other options in a sec. But basically, this creates an LFO in a variety of shapes from sine to square to triangle, and you can have a tempo synced rate, for example, and you can control the intensity of it. And then you can hit tab again and determine where or what parameters this LFO will influence. So let's try having it go to the pan input of this mixer. And we should soon have a auto panner that goes from left to right or right to left. Now you're hearing that a little bit, but let's start the drums more to the left. And now let's hear what happens. Let's increase the level. Let's increase the rate. Let's change this waveform. So that's all pretty cool, but it can get way, way cooler than that, obviously, because Reason is only limited by your imagination. So let's go back to just a simple waveform and let's listen to what this sounds like real quick. And hopefully you get, you're not listening on a phone, but if you're listening on headphones or like in a monitor, so you'll hear it panning. Um, so we can either, there's two LFOs built into this. So we could turn on the second LFO and have it influence the patterns of this first one. We could do a different, right now it's not synced to tempo, but we could have it, for example, synced, going a little bit faster, and it could have it ramp up the rate of the other one periodically. So let's see what this sounds like now. So 
so you can create these really complex sounds. Let's use this chaos. So you get really cool effects. You could also, we could turn this off and not have it do it, but we could use instead the envelope here. For example, if we wanted, we could have an envelope filter to um, control the rates and the LFOs. So you can quickly, quickly get very advanced sounds just using Pulsar and this technique, have a world-class auto panner. But there's a ton of other effects and reason, like I said, that also do this. For example, you could use synchronous here, which allows you to draw in your own curves. Let's clear this, right click, and do reset device. So now I'm going to show you how to do, let's say, a tremolo effect. Here we have a grid, and here we have the shapes, and then here we have the rhythms. So let's do like eighth notes, and we'll ramp it down. Right, come on now. Ramp it down. Then we'll round it out for some longer sounds, and then we'll slowly bring it down. I mean, who knows how this is going to sound, but whatever. We'll turn this around and do the CV out here. We've got CV in, but CV out, that's outputting the CV instructions. And by the way, I've got a whole other video on CV, which I'll link to. Um, and maybe that'll pop down at some point. So we take this, and now let's put it to the level in. So instead of controlling the panning, we're controlling the level. Um, I'll also say that actually, Synchronous has a built-in level control, so you can do it without all these hoops, but whatever. Um, so let's check this out now. So one thing we're doing is we're clipping right now. So instead of taking the regular curve out, we could invert it. So where it's high here is actually low and vice versa. Now let's listen. And we could change the speed of the playback, for example. And then if we wanted to, we could route like the inverse of this or the regular part of this to the pan. And now we would have this crazy. And if you actually think about what you're doing in advance, you can actually make it sound really good. So that's two really cool examples of what you can do with Reason, basically, is use these LFOs and then these sequencers to create patterns, which you can then apply to any pretty much variable that exists in the reason rack. From panning to volume, you could automate effects. You know, you could have it so that a delay gets longer or shorter. You can have it basically almost any parameter on a reason device is going to have a CV in or an ability to map to that CV using the combinator. And so you can create these really cool kind of semi organic patterns that are either synced to your playback or are just running free. The next one I want to show you is the ability to just kind of create these lush instruments in Reason. So here I've got the MIDI and instead of using Reason as an insert, I'm using it as an instrument. I put in the other mixer here, the micro mix, and I've inserted a couple delays as a send effect internally to Reason. And then I've added two synths here and let's delete this part so what this allows me to do is basically create an entire synth here and just all the panning all of the effects on it all of the levels to create kind of this thicker pad all that's just one channel i could also create multiple outs of this but that's not really what i'm trying to do here so let's listen And if we were just to do one of the instruments, like let's listen. This is just kind of what it sounded like if I would just have one instance of the reason. But let's... So that's pretty cool, right? And I've got a reverb here, 
with a, a bit of delay, all pretty cool. But now that I've shown you that you can create these cool things, let's go all the way back to where we started and let's put a Pulsar LFO on this again and start doing some fun things. So what I wanna do is map the pan of one of the synths to the Pulsar's regular signal and the other to the inverted signal, the inverse signal. So when one is positive, the other is negative, so that they'll now basically be auto panning opposite each other. Let's listen. And now let's add some MIDI follow. So it's going to actually track the keyboard as it does this. And we'll change how much it affects the LFO. So when the signal goes on because of the MIDI, it goes on, we can have it go on pretty quickly and release pretty quickly. And that, when that happens, we'll have it juice the LFO basically make it go really fast for a second and then it dies off. And then we could also, again, we were talking about LFO to trigger. So let's just add a little bit of this randomness going freely into the rate and inversely to the level of LFO one. And let's turn it on. And now this is all pretty cool, but now that we've got LFO two there, why don't we do something with it? So for example, we could have it control the delay time a little bit of this delay here. So we'll just do that. I've dragged delay time in to LFO to output. Now let's listen. You won't see it changing, but. You should hear it there. creating some pretty weird far out sounds. Uh, we could also have it mapped to like, um, you know, the mod wheel, for example, of this instrument. We can also manually assign it to many different parameters using just these generic CV ins. Um, but let's also have the inverse of it go to the reverb decay. So as the signal is at its strongest, it'll be at its weakest on the reverb, but at the strongest on the echo. And then if we want to just, I'll show you how that works. We could also take the CV in modulation here from one of the instruments and put it into like the inverse of LFO one, and then using this mod matrix here, just so you have a sense of what it is, we'll send, say the source is CV input one, which is where we just plugged it in. We'll say that it will have a, like a serious impact. And what do we want to map route this to? How about the unison maybe? I don't know, or mess, 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 messing around here. So let's see what this sounds like. Or let's do the filter. The filter is always good. All right. And we could also send it to like, I don't know, the Phaser, sure, the phaser amount. And we can also have it increase the phaser amount a little bit. And then we could also send it to like 
Well, that's that's enough for now. So let's just listen. But if you start playing around with the parameters as this goes on, that's what I would really recommend that you do. You'll hear things that sound cool when you mess with them. So route the LFO to that. And there you have it. These are three techniques you can use for really cool sounds using the Reason plugin with your DAW. Using CV, using sequencing, and then building these powerhouse synths, kind of combining all these techniques. I hope you found this interesting. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.